everyone! Welcome to a new episode of EasyPowerWall.com. Today is Buzz Bar Day. Follow me. You all know I'm a huge fan of Victron. You see here the Victron chargers. I have the Victron inverter, I have the servo, and I have here somewhere a Victron shunt. When I had to connect all the cables from the batteries to a central system, I really couldn't pull the trigger for the Victron Lynx. The Victron Lynx, or the more expensive brother, the Victron Lynx distributor, are over $250 or Euro, with the fuses included. This system costed me $100 or Euro. Of course, you'll find the link in the description of the video. So for me, it was a no-brainer. I'm really happy with the DIY result. It gives some kind of a futuristic look and it's easy to follow the wires, easy for maintenance. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with the result. So let me tell you how I uh, build the system or how the system works. We have the negative wires from the, the BMS, from the four battery banks that goes here under the ne negative bus bar and goes to a fuse. Every battery bank has his own separate fuse. These wires are connected to a smaller bus bar which is connected to the Victron shunt. I use the 500 amp version, that's more than enough. 500 amps multiply by 50 volts, that's 25 kilowatts. So I will never use that much of power. Let's have a top view. I have the cable holders here, which keep the cables firm and tidy on the shelf. Cables are connected to the fuses and then go towards this smaller bus bar. The bus bars are 8 mm high and 20 mm wide. This one is 20 cm and the other larger ones are 33 cm. I bought these on AliExpress, they're 99.9% copper and I'm really happy uh, with the result and the, the price. I made a DIY setup. If I had chosen for a commercial version like the Victron Lynx, it would have cost me at least 500 euros. Now it's 100 euros, so I saved up to 80%. After the shunt, it's connected to a negative bus bar. And here I have the two cables from the chargers and the two larger cables go to the inverter. Let's move 30 centimeter. Here we have the positive bus bar. We tapped more holes here because there are four cables from the battery banks, two cables from the chargers and two to the inverter. As you can see, I also mounted two additional fuses in the positive line of the inverter. Remember it's uh, stated in the manual you always need a ground line towards the inverter. So make sure to install the fuse on your positive line towards the inverter. After watching this movie, you will be able to make your own bus bars and I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to install this bus bar uh, insulators. I did this a few months ago, but luckily I recorded the whole process. So let's see how I managed uh, to make them. Let me show you what we got so far. Here will be the 10 millimeter to attach it to the Victron shunt. Then one, two, three, four. That I have to increase to a size where I can tap the M8 thread. I make here a spare M4 screw. Don't know if I'm gonna use it, but you never know. It's better to do it right now. And here will be the uh, slightly bigger hole 
to attach it to the supports on the um, on the shelf. So I drilled them uh, with size three millimeter. Now I will increase to. I will try immediately to 6.5 and then I can uh, make the thread uh, M8. A bit of oil helps to keep the, the drill cool and make sure that your drill lifts longer. You there. Don't forget your safety glasses, okay? Just don't let the mechanics scare you off. It's rather basic and if it's done, it's very rewarding. I already made uh, two threads M8. I'll show you another one. After making a uh, an M8 thread, just make sure you clean the tap. Always use a bit of oil. Try to make it as vertical as possible on the bus bar. And then gently let the tap search its way through the copper bus bar. You feel you have to put too much tension, just go back one turn, and then move forward. That's it. Done. This is the status right now. The negative bus bars are installed. Just have to attach this properly to the shelf. Both supports has to be attached. But the M8 threads are done on both sides. Next step is to prepare the positive side here. I have the bus bar already here and I have to drill the holes and tap the M8 thread and then I can connect the positive wires as well. <clears throat> so the connector is fully covered on the bus bar. Um, I will drill the holes now in the, in, in the shelf. I will not yet attach the, uh, the shunt because I have to. I need to have access to the back of the shunt because I have to attach the positive wire from the shunt. Mm -hmm. 
So the first one is not very critical. But of course the second one needs to be in the in the center. So let's move them. That's also one of the reasons I didn't install the second layer of antennas. Uh, sorry, that's why I didn't install the second layer of uh, batteries because they will fall some debris on the second shelf. Let's drill the hole in different steps. Don't ruin the shelf. I made this a, a little tool just to determine the exact location where I have to drill. Let's repeat the procedure. First one seemed to have done the job, so I will repeat the steps for this side. The inner ring just helps me to uh, identify more or less the center of the surface. I add a ring just to make sure it doesn't push too much on the shelf on the on the bottom. Using an M6 screw, but I will. Use this one temporary now. So what do you think of this uh, solution? Let me know in the comments.
Let's end the video here. I hope you found the video about the bus bars interesting. It allows you to save a lot of money. In the next one, I will connect and install the fuses, connect the batteries to the fuses, and give the shunt its final place and connect it with the positive bus bar. Another good reason to subscribe to the channel. See you soon for the next one. This was Frankie for EasyPowerWall.com.